let's compute some definite integrals. So we're going to first integrate from 1 to 2 dx over radical 4 minus x squared. If I look at this, it looks a lot like an inverse sine, but we have to clean some things up. So I notice I'd rather have a 1 there than a 4. So I'm going to factor a 4 out. It's going to take a 4 out of the x squared, so we divide by 4. And now I'm going to have my 1. Okay, I can bring the 4 out as a 2. Then I'm left with dx over radical 1 minus quantity x over 2 squared. So now I just want to target this piece. And so that's what I'll substitute out. So u equals x over 2. du equals a half dx. dx equals 2 du. We substitute in, and we notice there's no more x terms in here. Since everything's in u, we can get rid of the x limits, replace them with u limits. So I'm going to put 2 into u and 1 into u and see what comes out. So u of 2 is 1, u of 1 is a half, and now I have my new limits of integration. The 2's cancel, and I'm just left with the derivative of inverse sine. So my antiderivative is sine inverse u from a half to 1. We evaluate and take the difference, and now I have to figure out what these numbers actually are. If I call sine inverse of 1 theta, that's the same as saying sine of theta equals 1. Remember, sine is the y value in the unit circle, so the y value of 1 gives me the angle pi over 2. So theta is going to be pi over 2 here. For sine inverse of a half equal to theta, that's the same as saying sine of theta equals a half. Remember, we have two possibilities here. This is going to be either pi thirds or pi sixths. We notice that the sines that go at pi thirds and pi sixths are either a half or square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2 is roughly 8.7. So the half is going to correspond to the smaller angle. Since a half is smaller than 0.87, that means we're looking at a lower y value. So that means we're looking at pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 is going to be equal to a half. So I put my pi over 6 in, and then I have pi halves minus pi six equals pi thirds. Now let's take the definite integral minus radical 3 over 2 to radical 3 over 2 of inverse sine over radical 1 minus x squared dx. If we look at this closely, we see that we have a function times its derivative. It's a special case of integration by substitution where the composition is just the function raised to the first power. So I'm going to let u be equal to the inside. That's going to be my function, which is sine inverse of x. du is dx over radical 1 minus x squared, the derivative of this times dx. And then I can push the radical to the other side. We substitute into the integral, and we see that the radicals cancel, leaving me with integral of u du. So I take the antiderivative of that, and that gives me 1 half u squared. Now, I need my u limits, so let's see how we get those. Well, if I put in radical 3 over 2 into u, I'm looking at sine inverse of radical 3 over 2. If I let that be equal to theta, I can rewrite this as sine theta equals radical 3 over 2. So I just have to figure out what angle gives me radical 3 over 2. Well, we want to know for the sine we're saying this is the y value. So we're looking at what angle has height radical 3 over 2, which is roughly 0.87. We know that the possibilities are going to be pi thirds or pi six. Radical 3 over 2 is going to be the bigger sign, which means we're looking at the bigger angle. Because this is 0.87, the other possibility would be 0.5. So this is going to have to be pi over 3. For the other limit, sine inverse of minus square root of 3 over 2, set that equal to theta. We rewrite it, so we're looking for the y value that's equal to minus radical 3 over 2. So that's going to be below the x-axis. Same angle, except we're going in the other direction. Now, remember, the angle that inverse sine gives out has to be between minus pi halves and pi halves. So our minus pi thirds is a perfectly legit value for inverse sine. So that's my other limit. Now, 
when we put these in to our antiderivative, we notice the value is the same because the square cancel the minus sign. So when we take the difference, we get zero. Uh, 